what I'm going to do, what I'm going to focus today's Q&A on is mostly healing. I moved the, um, you know, I moved the stream into the old training room over here um, so I could demonstrate some things on Darcy. Uh, Q&A last Wednesday, I was demonstrating a lot of things actually using Judy as my dog, which is really one of the best ways to demonstrate to people. If you're doing like a group class or something, just have someone grab the leash because you can have the person do all the things that you want the dog to do. So it's really easy, but I'll have Darcy and I'll be going through some phase two things. Now, if anyone is new to the stream and they're just watching this, a lot of this is covered in some of our old streams and you for sure should watch some of the old streams. I'll click over right now to show you is um, if anyone's new, absolutely. What you want to do is you do want to start off in the live classroom and start from the beginning over here. Introduction to foundation style training. A lot of your questions are going to be answered just by going down here. And a lot of the stuff that I'm doing here is going to be into the intro to phase two. Um, um, phase two command structure. Um, basically in this area right over here is where we're where's a lot of things are going to be you know is the is the prerequisites but what i'm going to do is i'm going to do more just in heal even though we talk about heal i'm just going to dedicate this stream to heal you could sure for sure ask other questions too during the stream especially after we sort of exhaust the the heal stream um the heal questions other updates over here for those of you who are the um, the or in the one on one apprenticeships, some of you are having trouble in the trainers course finding way finding where to book the one on one sessions with me. I moved it you know over here is where you normally go for your for your trainer course. These are the one on one apprentices. If you go on the drop down, you could you could schedule something with me you know right here. You know my times are. My times are available, available there. All right. Um, I'm going to go back. Let's see. Let's go back to our home page over here and I'll click over, get back to the back to our, why don't you open it up to, for me? There we go. Okay. So I got Darcy with me and we're going to go over some phase two things. So everyone, please feel free to chime in. Um, Darcy, I have her on a star mark collar. I do have an e-collar on her just because I, I have been working on it with her, her place, right? Darcy, place. Good girl, right? So I've been doing that in the apartment with her. We haven't really done it inside the training room, but now I can do my phase three place with her inside of here. Good, Darcy, free. Good girl. But we're going to be working on, on heel, on the mechanics. Now, to update everybody, um, to give you kind of a quick overview, is for sure, I'm going to be doing mostly phase two heel to show you the mechanics of it. The prerequisite, of course, is the phase one heel, which you would not want to be doing any of these things unless your dog does know a good phase one heel, right? Which you could go back in the streams, and we do go over it pretty, you know, pretty much in depth in the, in the phase one streams. So the phase one is just using positive reinforcement mostly, right? So this would be, I would really want Darcy to this level where even in just phase one, using no punishment at all, I have her on a variable reward schedule for just staying in back of me, right? And this is just a good phase one heal. She understands what it is. And also I can do... She knows pretty well how to get into the position, how to seek it, right? If I like step backwards, she can move with me. I can move to the side. She can adjust. I really like to get to this point with any dog where they sort of understand what this position is before I do any phase two. You see, I could do like 
kind of like box. I could go backwards, forward, simple steps, and she has a good idea what it is. And in pure phase one, I wouldn't, I wouldn't punish her for being out of position, right? I would just help her get back into the position. And then this is going to help her in phase two. Now, phase two, so we did some of this, you saw me doing this on Judy, but now I'm going to show you how I, you know, do it on an actual dog. When I'm working with the clients before I have them heal in phase two and go all over the place, I do what's called just a one step heal. So a one step heal that we're teaching the dog how to start, how to take the first step on the heel and actually how to halt on the heel all in just kind of like a one step sequence. Now I do a traditional heel. I am not telling anyone who's watching that they have to teach their dogs a traditional heel. You know, you could do heel however you want. I'm just showing you how I do the heel. I've evolved to do a traditional heel because from my perspective, you have to remember how I was running my business. I was doing a lot of in kennel training. I was doing a lot of private lessons for just regular people, not anyone that was looking to compete with their dog or do anything like that. So they, they were looking for a dog that they could take a nice lazy walk with and not be punishing their dog all the time. Something easy for the dog to be successful with and something that was easy for them to do. So I was, my main goal was just to make life more enjoyable for the person and their dog. Not necessarily to have a pretty attention heel that the person had to maintain or any of those kind of things. Now a lot of times people were walking their dogs while they were pushing a baby carriage, all these kind of things. So I wanted the dog out of the way behind the heel. But you can take the way that I'm doing it and you can modify it any way you want. But I hope that you can get some good ideas um, from what I am showing you. But this is the easiest way it's been for me, especially as I evolved from doing, you know, I was doing a lot of in kennel, then a lot of private lessons, and especially group classes. This was the easiest way for me to break it down. So it worked for everybody, all right? So before, and you have to imagine, if I had a group class and there was a dozen people in it, I'm not going to get a bunch of people all at once doing a nice pretty heel, but I would want them to at least be doing a good phase one heel in the beginning before they started. And then after they had that, I will show them everyone like very early in the training, they learn how to hold the leash, right? Which, you know, leashninja.com brings you right to that YouTube video that shows you how to hold the leash. And when I'm holding the leash like this, I use my right hand, if I have to, to pump forward. My left hand, I'm mostly using to stop the dog and to go backwards. And I just lay it on my fingertips and I could do little pumps with my fingertips. So we would do, I would start off doing the hokey pokey with the dog. So always I would do this. We'd start the dog in the heel position, like what Darcy is in. If they weren't, I would just Darcy heel, good girl. Now they're in the position. Then from here, the one step heel. What I want is I want to teach the dog that when I say heel, that she's supposed to stay behind me. And most dogs where they mess up is on the first step. If I just start walking with her and right away she goes ahead of me, right away we're off to a bad start. I want her to start behind me. Like I want her to be behind me. So ideally when I start walking with the dog, I do not want them to move until this left foot hits the floor. Because once that hits the floor, I'm going to have some clearance that I can keep with her. Now you're going to see how this is going to work. So I'm going to go through some of these steps. When I, the first thing I'll tell people to do is put the dog in a heel and I will just have them move around their right leg. Because I do not want the dog moving. It's behind the left foot. It has nothing to do with this right foot. Now, for some reason, she goes to move. You see, I just tell her heel. She gets her little correction. By correction, it is punishment, but it's meant to fix her, right? I'm correcting the behavior. I'm showing her where she's supposed to be. So I'll have everyone stand here and look like they're about to step off, and the dog just has to learn that this means nothing. You really want them to desensitize to this right foot. Now, once they do that, I don't want them to get thrown off balance and do a big exaggerated step. 
I have them just keep their right foot a little bit forward so they're well balanced, just as if they were going to really step off. You're a good girl. And then what I would do is just have them lift their left leg like this. You don't want the dog moving the left leg because by the time you land it, the dog is already going to be parallel with their left leg. So I have them do this, do this, but not drop it. If she goes to move, she's not going to, because I have done phase two, heel with her. This left, this left hand is where it's at. You just zip it down and you stop her. All right, now watch this. When I do drop my left foot in front, that's when I'll encourage her to go back into the heel position, which is behind my left foot. All right, so she's a little distracted right now because I'm talking to you. But watch, my right foot is here. Watch, I lift my left leg, and now when I drop it, this is where I could encourage her. There you go, good girl, just to step behind that. Now look, I'm not, my right foot is still back here, heel, all right? After I know that she's stopped and she's where I want her to be, heel, then I'll put my right foot together, all right? And that's a one-step heel. Now watch me do this with her, Darcy Free, without me talking to you. I'm going to stay connected to Darcy and teach her. So I'm just going to do a bunch of these one-step heels. So I'm going to start so I stay on camera so you have a view. I should be able to do a few of them, all right? So watch how I do this, all right? All right? Right foot, this comes up, she moves, I do a little punishment, it drops, good girl. Now I put my right foot together and I could give her a reward, all right? Right foot, left foot, good girl. She stops, right foot together, reward. I'm teaching her this pattern, right, left, I stop her if she needs help right foot together, reward. Darcy, free. All right. Now, for clients do, I will have clients march around the whole room. You can have, you teach people that pattern. You could do a dozen people like that. And you just do one step at a time. You tell them to go forward. They're going right, left. Encourage the dog there. You stop them together. You're getting this into the owner's muscle memory and the dog's muscle memory, all right? And I could go all the way around like this. Get her stop, right, go like that. You see my back now? You can do things like this to the side. Right foot, the same idea. She doesn't move, lift my left foot. When it drops, encourage the dog to shift. Good girl, all right? You can go the other way. When you go the other way, you keep your right foot planted and you could just lift your left leg. Left leg lands, encourage the dog over. Good girl, then right foot together, all right? Darcy, free. You can do it backwards. You can do it backwards with the dog, all right? And you could usually just do it, when I'm going backwards to help the dog, you can just have your hand on the left, you know, use your left hand on the leash like this going backwards or you can have like this. Sometimes you could, this helps the dog to go backwards, right? So I go right foot back. As I go back with the left foot, I encourage the dog backwards, right? If they stand, it's a little harder. Darcy, heel, heel, oh, good girl, all right? This one, she needs a little practice. Right foot, left foot, there you go, good girl. I'm backing her up. Right foot, left foot, Back her up. Now I'm going to the side. Good. All right, so you get the idea. All right. And this is just very good to do with the clients. And this is also, people rush the heel. And actually, by going slower with the heel, you move quicker, if that makes sense. Because some people jump into the heel. They jump in the heel too quick. And then what happens is they're just dealing with this sloppy heel for weeks and weeks and weeks and trying to fix it. Where if you start off like this, it's really easy. Now I'm going to show you after they get this, what you can then do is called the multi-step heel. Watch how this works. Because she's a, now that she is waiting until my left foot drops, I can get that head start on her. And I just start moving. And we already did phase one heel. 
So now I'm able to encourage her to stay there. I could do some punishment, but once I get that head start, I'm doing basically the same thing that I was doing in the phase one heel, all right? But I can add punishment to it if I want. But I'm not gonna add punishment to it right away. Just watch how I start this and how I just maintain her there. Darcy, heel, good girl. So she's gonna come behind. Now watch, now I'm gonna use this left hand if I have to, but usually when I'm teaching heel, I have the leash in a starting position, and I keep this hand up here unless I'm stopping her. But watch the head start I'll be able to get on her. I go right foot, left foot, good girl. Look at that head start I got, all right? Good girl. I wouldn't have been, good girl. I wouldn't have been able to get that head start if she didn't wait for that left foot to drop. So right away, I set the pace right. Now watch this, the left foot. We were teaching her, good girl, that when the left foot stops, that's when she stops. But I'm gonna be ready for her with the zip hand. Watch this, I plant my left leg, and then I zip down my left, my left hand to make sure she stops, then I put my right foot together. All right, it's very important when you're teaching the heel that you make sure the dog stops when your left foot stops, not when your right foot stops. If you wait for your right foot to stop, it's too late. The dog would have blew past you. Now watch me do this a few times with her, all right? So she's still in heel, she's still in command, so I don't even have to tell her that again, all right? I told her her name in heel, she's still in it. Watch right foot, left foot, it drops. Good girl, good girl, I'm gonna encourage her. All right. Good girl, watch my left foot. I come to a halt. Oh good, she stopped on her own. Good girl, right foot together. Good girl, I'm gonna start again. Right, left, good girl, you are a good girl. You are such a good girl. I'll keep stopping in the same spot. Watch, left foot stops. See, she's kind of doing it on her own because she's so used to um, that pattern. Dogs can learn, they learn so easy if you're consistent and you're predictable with them, all right? And this is how my phase two heel really starts with the dogs and how I start the people on phase two. Now, a good drill you can do is just with the mechanics is she's being really good. Now, if she was excited and messing up, it is all in this hand movement, all right? Now, Eve watches, Darcy, free, good girl. Good girl. Now, even if I'm not even doing the formal heel and I walk around the room with her, the movement that you're showing them is, so I'm just walking around the room with her and get excited. Who's a good girl? Who's a good girl? All right. It's left hand gets zipped down if they forge. If she starts forging in here, I do left hand zips down, right foot, left foot. Look where she is it gets zipped back up. So I'm not even telling her heel, I'm gonna run around with her. Woohoo! Anytime she goes ahead of me, left hand down, right, left, zips up. Do, 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 do. All right, left hand down, right, left, zips up. All right, left hand down, right, <laughs> left, zips up. This is how I keep the dog from never being able to pass me, all right? Never. Left hand, right, left, zips up, all right? Now if I make her, if I start telling her heel so she knows that's what she's supposed to be doing, it's gonna be a little easier, watch. Darcy, heel, good girl, all right? She's forging, left foot, right, left, zips up, good girl. Heel, right, left, zipped up. All right now she looks more like a real kind of dog that you would deal with, right? Not one to listen. But this is how we maintain her back there for the forge. Right, left, zip up. Good girl. And this is the mechanic you're teaching your clients. My left foot drops, look, left hand zip, right, left, 
zip up with my hand. You want them to be loose. What a good girl. What a good girl. All right. That's the main. The main say so you could run. Left, right, left. That's how we keep them down. There's no jerking the dog, making them walk backwards behind you. Now, Darcy, sit. Good girl. Darcy, please. You good girl. You good girl. Um, now, this is all phase two. Now, phase three, now that's just one, one thing, all right? That's for the forge. Now, very excitable dogs, that's what phase three is for, all right? That's what phase three is going to be for. I have her e-collar on her. I'm not using it for the heel right now, but maybe I'll show you. If she, where the phase three comes in is after you know she learns this, you ever see people teaching a dog heel with an e-collar and they're like using continuous and like moving the dog into position, doing all this crazy stuff? When you teach the dog this way, Darcy heel, good girl, the e-collar, all you have to do is it just adds motivation, right? Where you just use a single nick, right? You would just use a single nick with this thing. Where if I was healing with her, and you have a dog that just, they keep crossing the back of your left leg. She's not really gonna do it now. She calmed down, good girl. The moment that I would press the neck is the moment that I would normally zip down my hand. All I would do is that exact moment they go to cross, I'd plant the left leg and just hit the neck at the same time, all right? Darcy, please. Good girl. All right. That's all I would do. It is so easy. Phase three with the heel. If you put your homework in and you teach the dog, because then what happens is you could start low and you just climb the level on the phase three. And this is how you get a pretty good phase three heel quick with not a lot of, without having to use a lot of e-collar, just a single neck. And then suppose you start off at level 10 which is low on this collar, it goes up to 127. You just keep turning it up until the dog notices it and they're like, oh, they know this pattern so well, they know that that nick only happens when they go to cross your left leg when you're healing. And then they could completely avoid it. And you have that left hand there to help them if they need it. And it is super, super easy to add the phase three to it, right? You're just adding motivation. You're just basically layering it with the leash as they go to pass the left leg. But I do not touch an e-collar on a heel until the dog knows what it is and how they're supposed to do it, all right? Does anyone have any questions right now at this point? Because I'm gonna keep going forward with uh, some other um, phase two corrections for, for, for heel. Are we good? Am I still streaming? This side looks good. Is, is the stream coming in good? Because sometimes it's buggy when I go in the, in the training room. Let's see. I think we're good. No complaints. Okay. Um, all right. Now the other ones, I mean, the forge is the one that everyone's usually worried about when we're, when we're training. And it's that footwork. Um, you know, Brad was talking about the slow step. Oh, it's good? Okay, good. Thank you, Corinne. Um, Darcy, free. Good girl. Now, all the teaching in phase two, it's all in this right hand. It's all in these two, it's all in these two hands. I use both of these hands on the leash like this. You know, I use, I could use the right hand to pump forward and I can use this left hand to pump backwards and I could do different things if the dog goes, goes, behind, goes behind me and to the side. Mitch says, when you go through doors, do you have a particular approach, like turning around to close the door behind you? Um, oh, I don't know, Gen that's a good question. I don't know if, I don't have anything in particular with the doors besides I may make a dog, if it's gonna be a door that's gonna swing wide open, you know, I may make the dog like sit 
a little bit further behind me and then open it up and then release the dog. You know, I may do something like this. If I'm healing with the dog and I halt, I then may tell the dog, give the dog a formal sit, like Darcy, sit, good girl. So that means that they can't move at that point. All right, and then I may slide out, open the door, and then call the dog to heal, walk through, have the dog sit if I'm going to close it. It's, um, I mean, you could be very, you could, you could use the obedience in any combination that you really want. But that's why, Darcy, free. That's why I like to keep everything simple. If you notice when I do a heel, there is no automatic sit. I do not do automatic halts with the dog. Because if I halt with the dog, I still want to be able to shift if I'm in a heel. Darcy, heel. Darcy, heel. Good girl. I still want to be able to shift around if I have to. And the dog pretty much stay there. You know, like a practice with the dog stay in there. I don't do automatic halts at all. But, but I can at any time, right? Dar Even if she is sitting, she doesn't have to be sitting. If I say, if I tell her, Darcy, sit, she now has to stay. Good girl, all right? If I say, Darcy, heel, heel, good girl. So she has to go back into heel position. You are a good girl. Good girl. Darcy, free. Um, it's always such a point of contention to clients. Yeah, you know what? There's, keep it simple. I mean, and you know what, Mitch? Like, a lot of it has to do, I mean, you got to remember. I mean, it depends what type of client you're working with. If you're working with someone who's doing competitive obedience, me, my specialty has always just been the average pet person, and I was looking to make their life easier, you know. Um, not only the person's life easier, the, the dog's life easier. So you want to set the dog up for success, make it easy for the dog. So I kept it simple. Heal just meant stay behind me until you hear your name, and then I tell you something, tell you something different. Um, okay, good. So to so give you an example, right, when I tell her, if I tell her, Darcy, heal, good girl. She's always in heel. I can have a conversation with you and she just has to stay there. All right. And I can halt and she just has to keep moving with me. All right. No matter what I do, you're a good girl. I'm going to make sure I tell her she's being a good girl, but that's it. There's no halt. You know, there is no formal, formal halt. Right. But then I could say, Darcy, sit, sit, Good girl, she enlists, I'll punish if I have to, good girl. But now I should be able to do all the movements and since I told her to sit, that's what she's supposed to be doing, all right? And then I could go back to telling her, Darcy, heel, heel, good girl, I'm gonna help her. She needs a haircut around her eyes bad. Do you even see me anymore? That's my fault. Good girl, you know, you just, you keep it simple. You keep it simple for the, for the dogs. And you see, if she messes up, I'm just going to help her, right? You just help her. RC free. To me, it's about, like I say, making it easy for the client and, uh, and the uh, dog. But this way, I've been doing heel. If you watch the stream and you see how I'm doing it, if you practice this way, it becomes so easy. Now, even though I was working on the forge, see, I was working mostly on the forge, she's going to do other things too, like look all around. I think I forgot to answer last stream. Brad wrote something about what do you mean mind and body and heal? What that means is I want, not only do I want their body in heal position, when I'm healing, I want them generally focused on me. Now I do not mean like an attention heal. I just mean if I see them focusing on something over there, I'm just going to pump and say heal and get their attention on me. I don't want them to miss where I'm going. I don't want to have to trip over a dog, right? See, I want her to see when my legs are moving. You're a good girl, all right? So if I see in general that they completely lost focus of not being able to see where I'm shifting, I usually just do a little pump towards the direction back towards me, whatever it is, like very little. And I'll say, and I'll say heal. And then this eventually can when we're talking about reactive dogs and stuff like this it's the same timing of the pump that you could pair with the e-collar at whatever level as soon as they go to look at something they're not supposed to be looking at so they see a distraction as more of a reason to focus you know to focus on you but it starts in phase two heal and i always tell them i usually tell them he i tell them heal when they lose focus so they know what they're supposed to be doing all right 
and I could, I could pump with either one of these hands, all right? Depends on what hand is loose, what hand is doing something. I have two hands, I could do a pump, but otherwise it's very, very loose. Now besides this, I mean, the, the hardest one for the clients to master is that forge, right? Left hand zips down as the left leg stops, right, left, make sure the dog is still there, zip it back up, I get my head start. But the other ones are actually pretty easy, all right? If they start focusing left, I just give a little pump right. If they start coming behind me to cross over, this left hand can just pump them back out this way and you say heel, all right? It's just if she went to cross this way behind me and I could sort of like get her back there, right? My left hand will just come over, it's the fingers, and just pump them over, all right? If they're wide, I just, with this hand right here, I could just, you know, get them back this way and you help them, all right? Um, it's pretty easy. And of course, if they're too behind or looking, you just do whatever to pump. Now, I do this. This is, I consider it escape conditioning in phase two. I mean, I'm showing them what to do with all the punishment for different things that they're out of position. Because then after they have an idea of it, that's when I do my condition punisher, meaning showing them ways that they can avoid being punished and heal, which is mostly my sidesteps. So the sidesteps, you could see a lot of these in the old videos. You actually go back to like um, some of the old, um, the old videos with like me and the dog outfit and stuff like that with Earl. You could see a lot of the sidesteps, but I'll show you what those are right now. These are designed, there's four, there's really four, um, four steps, four condition punishers when to heal. There's one for forging, going ahead of you. There's one for going too slow or focusing on something behind you. One for do, going too wide to the left. One for going behind you. And these are super important too if you want to do off-leash heel. If you don't do these, you're going to feel, find yourself punishing the dog all the time. And the dog is not going to like healing with you. All right? So... All as you do is you just practice all these steps. So watch what I do with her. This is because she's focused on something in the other room. So I'm going to tell her, Darcy, heel. Good girl, heel. Now, you, you don't need to wait for the dog to get out of position. All right? The first one, of course, is planting the left foot. If I think the dog is starting to forge, all right, instead of just punishing her right away. I can watch, I can pause my left foot, heel, and then only a split second, if she doesn't stop when I pause my left foot, well, I do a primary punisher, the leash. Then I go right step, left step, good girl. So what happens, this is your conditioned punisher. It's like saying the word no. What'll happen is you can save your dog, heel, some punishment by just pausing your left leg. So if I'm moving out with her and I see she's creeping up and I want her to slow down, I can pause my left leg. See, she stopped. Look, right, left. Now she's going to go. I got my head start. So it's a warning. I just do this if she starts going parallel. All right. This is a condition punisher. Plant, right, left, and I can go. All right. Where there, I probably would have gave her a real punishment. All right. Plant, right, left, I got a head start. That's actually a condition punisher, all right? Or we call it the slow step, but that's all as it is because she really naturally learned it from all this initial footsteps we did. But you'll notice after a while, if, especially if the dog is trying and not focused on something that she shouldn't be, that's usually all you need when they start the forge. But when they're all, she's distracted by something. I don't know, saw a mouse over there or something. Who knows in here? Um, usually that's all you need. If not, of course, you use your regular punishment, but you, want, you don't want a dog walk on eggshells. You don't want a dog that is trying to heal to be getting punished for making honest mistakes. You never, ever want to do that. Now, what I do for the dog going wide is you got to hold this leash in a way that it's always loose, all right? And it's sliding easy. You don't want the dog to feel tension when you're healing with the dog. 
But when I'm normally just healing with the dog, sometimes what I'm going to do is I'm going to just crab step as I'm moving. So I can move forward and then I'll crab step and I want to see if she comes in back with me. If not, I don't put tension on the leash. I just judge it enough so that if she doesn't come back, I just use my hand and I give her a little pump and I tell her heel. So watch me do, and then I do the opposite the other way. Even if she's in position, I make sure I practice as I walk. I'll sidestep this way and I have my hand in a way where it's loose. So I'm not dragging her anywhere where if she doesn't shift herself, I give a little pump. So then what happens is they learn as they get a little bit out of position when you're just healing, you could just, as you're walking, you do these little subtle side steps back and forth and it shifts them over and they just know move, yet your timing has to be right. You shift, then you punishment. And remember this punishment in phase two, it's not like anything harsh. It's, it's more like help, you know, you're helping the dog, you're showing, you're, you're correcting the dog. You're showing them what they're supposed to do. So watch what it looks like. I'm going to do side steps back and forth, teaching them condition punishers. And this will make that heel chart make more sense to you too. Well, Darcy heel, good girl. So I'm walking with her. I sidestep, good girl. All right, she's going to do it well. Sidestepping, good girl. Heel, sidestep, heel, good girl. Not that much room in here. I'm going to go this way, heel. Good girl, this way. Good girl, she's fixing herself. If they fix themselves, you don't have to do anything. She forged, right, left, zip. All right, right, left. I'm still gonna punish for the forge, but I'm working on my side steps. Now, if you're working with client, I used to have a rubber mat in here. It's over at the Paladin Center right now. I used to give them a nice track to work with, so they at least just had a guide. You know, I give someone a nice guide to work on, and then I'll have them go around, and I say, do you sidestep, heel, see that's a good one. Sidestep, good girl. All right, I go this way. She's, she's just doing it on her own. But if she doesn't, if she doesn't react to those sidesteps, you punish afterwards. But the punishment, you see, it's just little pump. That's it. All right. Now on that note, because I'm in this room without my mats, I don't know how well the camera is actually on pretty wide. You can see it. I will have people practice their corners. When you're walking corners, dogs tend to cut the corners. So they're really, those are the best places to actually practice doing your side steps. Watch, I'll go around this room and you'll see on the corner, she'll try to cheat them. Cause he's like, oh, I know which way we're going. We're going to a wall. So I'll purposely use the corners to do um, in both directions to practice, to practice different side steps, especially if I'm going counterclockwise. Watch this, I tell Darcy, heel, good girl. She's going to cut the corner over here when I get to this corner. So I'm gonna sidestep right there, heel. Good girl, watch, I'm gonna sidestep this way. I sidestep, good girl. This keeps them a little more honest. I'm gonna sidestep, good girl, before I make my corner. And this really helps them. Good girl, I don't know if I'm on camera there. Am I? Sidestep, heel, good girl. This is very, these are good patterns to do. You know, you go around counterclockwise. All right, because they have a tendency to forge and cut corners when you do this pattern. So I do lots of side steps right. Then when you do your bow turns, you go the other way, all right? They're gonna have maybe, this is always easier when you're working with the client, I have them go clockwise because they lose some ground on the corners. These are a good time to practice the quick step. So sometimes they lag a little too much and the quick step is I just take one quicker step, like right after I do a corner, just to teach the dog to catch up. And if not, you just do a little pump. Going this way, watch, I make the corner, one quick step, if not, heel. It just teaches them to pick up their pace when you make a right, a right foot step. And then that becomes a conditioned punisher too, 
right? They're going a little too slow. You just take one quick step, it teaches them to catch up, and you praise them. So now I have all these conditioned punishers. The idea is I want to heal with her, and she knows she gets warnings, so I'm doing slow steps. Um, everything she does wrong, she forges a little. I drop my right foot, right, left. She can save herself a punishment. She starts getting distracted that way. I could sidestep. And she knows she can avoid punishment. All right, you wanna be able to relax with your dog when you're walking and the dog not be walking on eggshells. All right, so yeah, I just slowed her down there. And, you, and it's okay to help your dog. All right, this is just for the normal person. You know, this is just a normal person, normal person, traditional heel. And it's actually pretty easy. And it's not, I mean, I'm giving you all these steps are going like this. But if you watch this and you just break it down into little steps and work with the client with one little thing at the time, they move quickly. And I usually, I do a lot of heel when I was working with a client. Meaning like, I wouldn't be like, today we're just working on heel. I might do just like some one step heel and then work on their sits and downs. You know, then the next time do... Um, you know, do some more heel, get them moving, and then work on the other things. You can always add it part of your lesson and you move along with them. And you just go, you go more and more with the heel each time that you, each time that you do it. All right. Um, I'll do more on the phase three heel with the e-collar. I could even do it next stream. Um, I don't want to add too much in one stream with her. Um, there's a lot to the phase three. Actually, there's not that much to the phase three heel. Um, but I don't want to jam it, jam it into too much, but you'll see it's pretty easy. You're mostly in the beginning. You're just pairing a single nick when you would normally punish them. That's really it. There's none of this continuous stuff that you have to do. And the dogs understand it so much better. Darcy's barking at Judy. You want Judy? You want Judy? Am I boring? Am I too boring? <laughs> She's throwing her a treat. All right, and of course, if I'm starting the heel, this is why you do all that heel seeking in the beginning, is even before I move, you know, you want that dog to know the position, right? Darcy, heel, see, she's gonna go over there, good girl, all right? You want them to know, heel is a position. So it's just a position, it doesn't matter if you're moving or standing still, they just know their job is to stay in that position. And I just feel the heel is just, does not get enough attention really people a lot of trainers are really sloppy about it they try to teach the whole thing in like one lesson and the dogs just do so much better it's so much easier to maintain if you really just teach them teach the dog what it is all right darcy place good girl good girl you like this you're doing pretty good you're doing pretty good good Anyone have any questions with that? All right. I hope this is clarifying some of the some of the heel and the certain steps. But I always break it down. And I know I put some, you know, I you know, you could watch that group class. I could find the link to it. And you could see me doing a whole group class on on the one step heel. Two. Darcy, free. Good girl. Good girl. I have a whole group class on and you could see what it looks like me teaching like a whole I mean that group class is probably like a dozen people in it. And you can see it works well. That's how I do how I do all do I how I do all the dogs. Now and it's totally fine too, because when you do it like this, remember even if you're you're healing with the dog and you're not paying attention and you halt and the dog is out here, you can still start from the beginning and tell the dog heal and just get him back over there like suppose you get to an intersection you're not paying attention and you stop and the dog is out here it's totally okay to then tell the say the dog's name again and tell him heal you know i could darcy heal and if she does good girl all right get her right back there it's totally fine all right but normally because i will see people healing with their dogs this is what you don't want to do if you're moving you're and the dog forges this is a common error i see people make which makes life so much harder and the dog happens to forge don't try to get the dog to move backwards every time they're ahead of you there's no need for it all right you're if you're going to go forward anyway you're just teaching the dog if they make an honest mistake is to stay still 
and wait for that left foot to make another cycle. Right, left, and you're always ahead of them. All right, so like you or the dog, dogs make honest mistakes, all right? We both mess up, the dog's out there, you see? They just wait for a cycle. Right, left, they're back behind you. So easy. What a good girl. What a good girl. I say this is for that just nice, see? Relaxed walk. And once you get moving with the dog, you're going for a long walk, you could get him back here. And then this is when it's easy when we start doing things if we want to like tie the dog to us or we're pushing a baby carriage or whatever. You want the dog out of your way. So I can make, and there's none of this, there's none of this like, um, Darcy, heel. Good girl. There's none of this swinging your leg around and kicking the dog because the dog is not in your way. There's none of it. You don't have to do any of that crazy stuff because if they're in that position where you're swinging around your leg and kicking them, they're forging. You just, you just, you just correct them for the, for the forge. And you, you don't have to do anything even fancy for even these tight left turns. They're already in a good position. You make a left turn. You're just, you make another turn and you got a, you know, you got 180 degrees. It's so easy. Good girl. I didn't even have to really do anything fancy. And as long as she knows not to go wide, you know, I could do pretty tight turns. You know, you could, you could spin all over the place with the dog and it's pretty easy if you have them in the right position. You just stick to the basics, all right? If, if you can't do that, it means they're going wide or they're going behind you. They're doing one of the basics wrong, you know? So if you stick, you stick with the, you, you keep it simple, you make it easier for you. you make it easier for, for everybody. All right. Um, let me see. All right, so I'm going to give Darcy, Darcy a break since she's been dancing around with me for about 50 minutes. Now she wants her dinner. Um, let me go back and I saw some questions way up, way up here. Um, let's see. I know Melissa mentioned way up over here in the comments, um, asking if I should do a blueprint for like leash reactive dogs. I can do that. But you'll see it's pretty easy. It's pretty much what we're doing here. Besides, you just kind of, um, a lot of it's management. She was talking about like in New York City, which I know what that is like. You know, I did, the last dogs I did in New York City, I had one like very leash reactive little pit bull. I just wanted to pick fights with everything that passed by, Melissa. And the way that I did it is I just, I mean, some things you can't get past, right? I, I did a lot, I, I went to the house every day, sped up the process, is I walked, I did a lot of heel in the apartment actually, right? I, I, I cleared a path, went around the table, went everything, I did heel just like this in the apartment. And within a week, I got so much repetition, you know, within phase one and phase two, within the week, I focused on that heel because I needed to get that dog out on walks and I got the dog on phase three pretty quickly, you know, probably within the fifth day. And I, I move slow, you know, I, I move definitely slow and I was able to work quick. And then before that, you can't get around management. You know, I went to the other sides of the streets. I did stuff like that. You know, most people have been managing, when they have a reactive dog, they've been managing it to a certain degree up to that, you know, up to that point. And of course, situational awareness and leash handle. And I kept the dog, I kept the dog out of, out of trouble. But you also ask questions about like, yeah, puppies and stuff like that. Whatever manage, you know, whatever helps with, you know, with those dogs. You know, sometimes you could go with like the gentle leaders or halties to make it a little bit, a little bit easier. But a lot of it is, you know, I haven't found a solution just around keeping as much distance as possible, you know, distracting the dog and managing it. But you can, you can, re there's nothing wrong with laser focusing on the, on the heel and making it a priority. Um, if I'm, if I have a dog, I say Manhattan's like worst case scenario, but that's what I did. You know, if, if I have something like that, I'll work a lot with that dog, you know, within a week, you can be very fair to that dog and get a decent phase three, like basic heel with a dog within a week. If that dog doesn't, if that dog takes to you easy and stuff like that. So I would focus on that. Wouldn't worry so much about all the other other commands because I need just to get that dog out, you know, out for a walk, you know, and be able to walk the dog around. But it's okay to do that. But yeah, but New York City, you're gonna situational awareness, 
management and all the dogs in the neighborhood that the dog doesn't like, all that kind of stuff. And they're just going to have to limit their walk um, um, until they get it to the point. But you can move quick. You can move quick with, with the dog. You know, there's no, no problem with it. And of course, you could use muzzles, all those kind of, all those kind of things. Um, but probably the blueprint, the fear aggression blueprint is probably pretty, pretty much what you're looking for is the fear aggression, is the fear aggression blueprint.